Since we started the series of hand warmer videos, things have evolved a bit and have led to assembly of a number of items to help rebuild the hand warmers. And now the question is, is a common question is, people arrive at the order form in order to find these parts they may need and need some help figuring out which parts would work the best for what they're doing. So what we're going to do today is address the items that show up on the order form. Put the link down below that'll take you directly to the order form. And this is what we're looking at on the website right now. And it starts out with uh, a fairly long-winded explanation as to what's going on with ordering processes and shipping. The shipping is very complicated. We're located in Canada and there's various options available. Letter post being the cheapest, but letter post doesn't afford tracking. And um, then if we don't use a shipping method that uh, uses tracking through PayPal, then PayPal has more limited options for us as the seller. So that's explained here in greater detail and it allows US and international clients to make choices as to how they want to make payment depending on what level of protection and tracking and so on they want. But the bottom line is for the best value for both the buyer and the seller, as long as you trust the seller, which in this case is me, is to go with the friend and family payment option through PayPal. And there are options there, however, with shipping by tracking here that you'll see where if you do want tracking, uh, it is available. It just costs considerably more. And with these types of items that are very inexpensive, usually that's going to defeat the whole purpose of what we're trying to accomplish here, which is getting your hand warmer back up on the landscape and working and keeping your hands warm for a reasonable price after you've found it sitting in the drawer for the last 20 years. So we're going to get started now with uh, going through the various items on the order form and demonstrating how they're used and what needs they may address on your side of things. Uh, so uh, we scroll down and uh, a couple other caveats there on the hand warmer. Please note that uh, minimum order amount is $10. Uh, last week I got an order for one spring for 91 cents. Well, the cost of uh, my bubble pack envelope and uh, the window envelope to put the shipping label in, printing the shipping label, uh, putting everything into your invoice and sending you the payment information, packing it all up. Uh, it just, I basically could go to work as a greeter in Walmart and make 20 times more of that amount than putting all that together and shipping one spring. So. All I ask is that we all be reasonable and uh, $10 is more than reasonable, especially given the amount of time it takes me to pack up each order and then get it out. And then she who must be obeyed uh, gathers them all up in the morning. And when she's got her work downtown to do, goes to the post office and does the shipping. That's why orders that come in until about 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time do make it out the next day and uh, so really the payment deadline think of it as in the evening and then those orders go out the next day I basically get them done before going to bed and leave them all for she must be obeyed to take with her in the morning so let's get started uh, after you put in your email address you'll arrive at the first item on the order form So the first item on the order form is the spring and catalyst kit. What you get there is one empty spring and one platinum catalyst pad. Generally you can get three spring repacks from that. So basically what you've got here now is the ability to rebuild the catalyst head in your Peacock, uh, Heikinen, uh, John E, uh, the smaller John E, and uh, Zippo hand warmers. The spring is pretty much universal, fits all that we've tried so far. And this is enough to rebuild one hand warmer. Here we have the 
spring and the catalyst and with this of course what you're going to be doing is repacking the spring yourself that will mean cutting off one third of <clears throat> the catalyst pad I usually use a straight edge an exacto knife and lay the straight edge down across my apologies for that lay the straight edge down across like that and then run the exacto knife across and cut it off and then you end up with a piece similar to this when you have that piece and you have your spring you need a pair of tweezers and you sandwich the platinum catalyst in the tweezers like so and then you insert the catalyst into the spring and then just tuck the ends in and now you have your pre-packed spring which will be ready to be inserted into your catalyst head. Once you have your spring packed then it's time to insert it into the head. As you can see the spring is longer than the head. This is a generic head from a Chinese hand warmer from the butterfly and if you have a Chinese head you may have to bend the tabs back that hold in the original catalyst for that I just use a pair of pliers and bend them back in so they're flush then it's pretty easy to insert one end of your spring into one end and then just squeeze it in by hand or you can use a pair of forceps you can see it does start to arch in there and you just kind of work it in with whatever works for you. Push both ends down so it's snug with the top. You do want a space because if this is touching the top of your reservoir, the cotton or the carbon felt, it can get contaminated with li liquid naphtha and you don't want that to happen. You only want fumes touching this catalyst. Now your spring your catalyst head looks like that and if you prefer you can take those little tabs and try and squeeze them back in for better retention I find that the spring generally holds well enough in there to work fine springs pre-packed with catalyst fairly self-explanatory these are used for replacing the catalyst in your head they're already packed and there's enough here to do two catalyst heads so let's say for example you had three hand warmers you wanted to rebuild then one option you might consider is buying the spring and catalyst together and then buying a set of the springs pre-packed with catalyst the platinum catalyst pad is approximately 1.25 inches by 1.25 inches and it's the same as in the first kit just without the spring so people that need refills that already have springs or need extra catalyst could order that the next item on the list is the large pad approximately eight square inches not going to spend a lot of time on this because i'm having trouble getting these containers to pack them in and uh, once I'm out of those we probably won't be able to offer that anymore. The next item is the empty spring and that's fairly self-explanatory it's the same spring that comes with the first kit and if you needed more in order to repack if you've got a lot of catalyst or doing more hand warmers then you go with this. Uh, the springs sometimes after they've been in use for half a season or a season you'll find that uh, if you take them out to replace the catalyst they may have already warped a little bit and taken on a permanent arch so that if you need to replace those you can start with a new spring the next item is the large John E empty spring and uh, we have originally got these springs by accident and they were too big to fit most of the generic hand warmer heads 
and then we discovered that they do fit the larger John E. head quite nicely. Uh, some clients that I gave them to were nice enough to try them for me and say they seem to work really well. And the picture I've got is actually supplied by a client that put one in his head and found that it worked quite well. So again, you will need Catalyst in order to do that one. Carbon felt strips are a very popular item because they allow you to uh, place the strip on the top of the cotton on your generic hand warmer to stop the cotton from getting charred and we'll go through the process of doing that in the video below. Now we have your carbon felt strips. You get two of them in a kit which can do two hand warmers. How to use those? Their intention is to stop the top of the cotton or the top of your reservoir to protect the cotton from getting charred in the top because when it gets charred that forms a barrier to the evaporation of fumes and eventually blocks them and disables the hand warmer. So for this procedure you can see that the strips are just slightly wider than the average length of a standard hand warmer. I prefer to use forceps in order to insert it and what I do is turn the forceps inverted grab the end of the carbon felt and you could do this with tweezers or needle nose pliers and just work it in through your own method and then insert the carbon felt in one way withdraw the forceps grab the other end of the carbon felt and then squeeze that in it's a little harder because I'm trying to keep this so that the camera can still see it and then I can do this. Once you have spread it to each end of the hand warmer you can then tuck it down in and then just kind of plump it out a little bit and finesse it so that you've got a nice flat. And then you can see now it's gone from white to black and hopefully that focus is enough that you can see. Once the carbon felt is in place you can fill and then place your head on and now you're ready to roll. Warm up your reservoir, get it lit, put your cap on and you should be good for a very good part of the season. The carbon felt pad is about enough to repack the entire reservoir of one regular hand warmer like a Zippo or a Peacock or a Butterfly, something like that and the reason for doing this is it decreases the smell of the naphtha because carbon felt is a natural deodorizer or odor filter on itself and for those of you that work emergency services with the dispatch center you will probably remember when they wheeled the 911 chair into the dispatch center as ours did and uh, lo and behold, to my amazement, when the dispatcher explained to me that those chairs have a carbon filter in them uh, for obvious odor filtering reasons that when there is uh, a lot of um, activity going on and the dispatcher cannot leave the chair, but they have bad gas, it can really affect the ability of the other dispatchers around them to do their job. The carbon filter therefore makes it easier for everyone in the room uh, as long as the dispatcher uh, keeps snugly seated into his chair and lets the filter do his work, it helps. And so that was my inspiration for carbon felt when I first learned with amazement that the 911 chairs had carbon filters in them. The S Boston hand warmer what we do is take that and improve on it by putting that carbon felt into the top of the reservoir head 
and then also throw in an extra catalyst pad because we have discovered that you can repack the catalyst in your S Boston which makes life more convenient and there is a video in our channel that explains how to do that. That's where you can see the video for the S Boston and then uh, for those on a tighter budget the modified butterfly hand warmer that's where we take the Chinese hand warmer and uh, place carbon felt and spring in the head and deodorizer this requires an oversized shipment because the bottles are about two centimeters diameter and by the time you put them in a bubber envelope they won't fit and somebody at the local post office or maybe even in a regional sorting center recognizes my labels and now knows that we were cheating and slipping them through the postal system they decided that uh, it's time for me to do my due diligence and started returning them to us so now we have to send these through an oversized method that was allowable which is small packet air or expedited parcel for Canadians or so on <laughs> so it's available in 15 and 30 mil containers and you can see those down below from time to time I do have some suitable lighters available and they will show up on the bottom of the order form and then disappear for example right now I only have one of these left so this particular one will disappear and uh, I'm trying to bring in some more of the USB ones which are my preferred method uh, for windy wet uh, and cold environments when possible then lastly on the order form there's more details to fill in the little red star indicates what's required you put the captcha in the lower case and then hit the submit button right here one last word on all of this regarding the order form I get inquiries from time to time can I just order this over the phone can we just do this through email can I send a credit card and so on and the short answer is no um, the reason for that is is there is a system in place here when, when this order form comes in it fills a spreadsheet through Google Forms uh, which then triggers me to send the payment request out to the client based upon what they ordered and that means then it could be shipping to Norway or somewhere else in Europe or to the United States or to Canada each one of those requires different payment method or different shipping methods sorry uh, and between Canada and US International it's also different payment methods so that can't be done automatically on a form I have to kind of tee all that up and submit it to the buyer once I have done that it's like a game of ping pong that's it I forget about that buyer and that request until something else happens to trigger another response and that trigger mechanism occurs when the payment is made when the payment is made I get notification and that then triggers me to generate the shipping label assemble the order and then when the order is assembled the shipping image gets sent out to the client so if you simply uh, change your mind and don't want something all you have to do is ignore the payment request and uh, forget about it if you do want something then make the payment as soon as possible and that will trigger your order to get started and get off to you
really... This is Ron Tessalini. Um, Mr. Tessalini, would you like to explain what you're doing right now? God only knows. <laughs> trying to have a shower. We're taking water from Bryant Creek. We've never done this before. Larry Gilmore. Over 60 years of combined experience between these two gentlemen, and they've never done it before. Okay. Here we go. We have to sign off now.